your time to avoid bridges. Bridges, just for any information, are when two pins can be soldered together. When the solder crosses two points, it forms a bridge. Very carefully, cleaning your soldering iron. People will tell you that you need expensive components for this job. You can do it with just a soldering iron. No fancy tools required. Time to make sure that all pins are evenly tinned. You can clean the PCB using flux and solder braid. Solder braid is probably one of the most useful tools that you'll find in this trade. The braid soaks up the solder and assists you in cleaning up the pads. Make sure that you clean up the solder from all the pads of cleaning all the solder will develop and you will see when the time comes to re-solder. When you're applying new solder, the solder bonds better if the contact is clean. If the contact is not clean, the chances are you'll get a dry solder joint. by a small amount of flux and brush off the excess residue. <laughs> We're now ready to solder or re-solder the IC pin back into place. You can align this up using one of two methods. The first one is that there will actually be physical markings either painted on or printed on the circuit board and the chip. In this case they are indicated by zero and by dots. Some chips, there's an alternative for pin one will have a dimple, or the equivalent of a small hole, or the edge may be beveled. So we'll pin one into place. So we'll pin on the opposite side of the chip into place, while keeping the chip securely placed and held in place. You can then proceed. You can then proceed to solder all the pins into place, making sure that the solder is evenly spread from the solder pads up to the contact.
to work your way around the IC chip, making sure the cylinder is spread on each and every pin. This job demands time and patience for anyone who's capable of doing it. All it takes is a little practice. Once the soldering is complete, you can test the pins using a small needle to check for any loose pins. Run your needle over each and every pin. Apply a small amount of solder. To the chip and clean away any any dirt or grease. Make sure the board is clean and dry. Once you've repaired the drive, PCB, secure it back to the original board. Let's try that again. Once you've finished your soldering, you can attach the PCB back to the hard drive and test it for detection. This drive originally had no detection. The logic board was tested and all the components appeared to be fine. The only thing we could do at that stage, and you cannot test it, was to remove the IC chip. Now, the hard drive is detected normally, having repaired and swapped the IC chip with the working donor. The model is detected correctly, the capacity is detected correctly, and now you can go ahead and recover your data.